Hi, everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk through the journal entries that are required when bonds are issued, as well as the financial statement presentation you can expect from those bonds. So starting off with journal entries, um, when bonds are issued, remember that bonds can be issued at their face value or at a discounted amount or at a premium over their face value. So sometimes the cash you receive will equal the amount that your bond says we will pay back at a later date. Sometimes the cash you receive will be more, sometimes the cash you receive will be less, and this is because bonds are traded in the open market and therefore subject to market forces. In the event that your bond is issued at face value, what's known as a quote of 100 or 100%, you simply debit cash for the face value of the bond, and you record the liability, bond payable, for the face value of the bond. So investors give you 100,000 now, you agree to pay them $100,000 at some future date as stated on the bond. That is the easiest journal entry when it comes to um, issuing bonds. If your bond is issued at a premium, so in this case, I give you a market quote of 105. That means 105%. What that tells you is that investors are willing to pay you 5% more than the face value of the bond. So if we stick to that same $100,000 bond, notice bonds payable, $100,000, so that's what you're agreeing to pay the investors in the future. Notice the cash you receive in this situation is $105,000 because investors are willing to pay you more now. That's because your bond must be more attractive in the open market than other potential investment opportunities. However, you have to balance this journal entry, and so you are going to record something that's known as a premium on the bond payable. This is what's known as issuing your bond at a premium, and that is going to capture the difference between the face value and the cash that you received. Notice because the premium um, essentially increases the overall book value of the bond, um, it is going to be a credit, just like the bond is a credit. In other words, it's going to move in the same direction that the bond moves. That's as opposed to a discount. When investors are not willing to pay you the face value of your bond, this is because whatever interest that your bond is paying must make it less attractive than market alternatives. So your, demand, your, your bond is not as in demand, and therefore you're going to get less money for it if you want an investor to, 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 to invest in it. Um, and so in this case, I give you a market quote of 97. So what that implies is investors are only willing to give you 97% of the face value of the bond. Sticking with that same bond payable of $100,000, that means the cash you receive will only be 97. So you're agreeing to pay investors 100 in the future, but they're only giving you 97 now. You're essentially giving them a $3,000 gain just right out the gate. You will have to account for that difference in an account known as discount on bonds payable. Notice though that the discount is a debit whereas the bond payable is a credit, and that's because the bond payable being a liability has to be a credit. The discount lowers the book value of that bond. You only got $97,000, therefore the discount is on the debit side, not the credit side. So those are your three journal entries, depending on which scenario you fall into. Remember, these market quotes could be anything. They could be 100, they could be 101, 102, 110, 120. You know, they could be 97, 95, 94, 80, doesn't matter, right? They can be anything. They're just percentages of face value received. Now, on your balance sheet, let's talk about that for a minute. I'm just going to kind of write off to the side here, kind of what the balance sheet's going to look like. In every situation, you're going to record a bond payable in the liability section of your balance sheet. Typically, it will be a long-term liability because bonds tend to go on for many years. However, remember, once that bond is within a year of being paid out, it would move to a current liability. And in every situation, regardless of whether you issued at face value, premium, or discount, that bond payable is $100,000, right? That is the amount that this bond stated as its face value. This is the amount that this bond puts you on the hook for to pay out to investors at the maturity date in the future. In the instance of being issued at face value, this is it. Your balance sheet will simply show bond payable $100,000. You're good to go. In the instance of the premium, beneath your bond payable, you will see add premium. And in this case, that premium was $5,000. 
And then that is going to give your bond a book value, sometimes known as a carrying value, of 105, which equals the cash that you did receive as part of this transaction. So this is how you'll see the bond in a premium situation. In the case of a discount situation, remember the discount actually lowers the carrying value of the bond, so you're going to see less discount. In this case, our discount was $3,000. Therefore, the book or carrying value is $97,000, once again, equaling the cash that you received. So these are the journal entries upon issuance, and this will be the initial presentation on the balance sheet um, as part of that issuance. Now, here I pulled a, a, a real-life financial statement. This comes from um, Home Depot's 2020 10K. I just want to show you that even though from a textbook standpoint, we tend to show things in this kind of simple manner of, oh, on your balance sheet, you'll see bond payable, or you'll see bond payable at premium or bond payable last, less discount. In real life, when you go look at real financials, um, it's not as, uh, how do I say that, rudimentary as this, or, or it may not even be as consistent as this from one company to another. So in the case of um, Home Depot's 10K here, if you go looking for bond payable, you won't see it on here because that phrase is not listed on this balance sheet. However, you will see long-term debt excluding in uh, current installments. And that right there, that is your bonds payable, at least the long-term portion of your bonds payable. They just refer to it as debt instead of bond payable. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, wait a minute. Okay, if that's the value, though, where's the premiums? Where's the discounts? Where's the, the, the all those figures that you just showed me on the prior slide? Well, these right here are the book or carrying values of the bond that they're putting on their balance sheet. However, that does not preclude them from having to put all that other information in their financial statements. And so what Home Depot is choosing to do in this case, and what you'll see in many cases with companies, is they will provide those details in the notes to the financials rather than on the face of the balance sheet. So if I pull up Home Depot's notes to the financial statements, notice they have a note called long-term debt. And look at how they list out all the bonds that they have as part of that long-term debt. Notice that they give you the interest rate on all of those bonds. They give you the maturity date on all of those bonds. They tell you how often the interest is paid. They give you the principal amount on those bonds. So that right there, that is bonds payable. And then they give you the carrying amount, or what we also call the book value. This is what's showing up when they tally all this up. This is what is showing up on the um, balance sheet, right? They're just giving you a lump sum total of the carrying value. If you take the difference between the principal and the carrying amount, that will tell you your premium or discount. So for example, in this first one, where you have a principal of 500 and a carrying amount of 500, this one right here is at face value as of 2020, right? 2020, I'm just gonna specify that so you know what numbers I'm looking at. However, if we go down a little bit and you say, look at this one, you will see that principal is 700, carrying amount is 698, so what that implies is that there is a discount of $2, right? So they're not explicitly telling you premium or discount like we showed in kind of the, the, oh, this is how the textbook would show you, but it is there. The information is there if you want it. Um, one thing I do want to point out before I leave this slide is don't get thrown off by the fact that you see the word notes instead of bonds over here. Senior notes is just a um, special type of bond where that, um, that debt instrument has priority payback over lesser debt instruments. Um, and so that's where that naming convention comes from. But this is a list of, in this case, Home Depot's outstanding bonds. All right, that is it for your um, issuance journal entries, as well as your kind of initial financial statement presentation and kind of a real world peek at what do those financial statements look like in real life versus just kind of the textbook um, version of showing you that. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.